how to push an image to GitHub Container Registry using Jenkins. There are numerous container registries where you can host your container images. In this video, we're going to take a look at how you can use Jenkins to build and push your images to GitHub Container Registry. Here's today's starting point. I have a Jenkins LTS controller version 2.303.3. Attached to this controller, I have a Linux-based agent that has Docker installed on it. Down in the description of this video is a link to a sample repository. Let's go ahead and take a look at that repository. What we have is a Docker file, three Jenkins files, and a readme. And within the Docker file, what we have is just a very basic from line. In this case, it's from Red Hat UBI minimal. And let's go ahead and take a look at our Jenkins file one, since that's where we're starting. And this is a fairly basic Jenkins file. We're gonna be doing a cleanup every job run. So we're going to be getting rid of all the volumes or anything else that's related to Docker. And then we're going to do a build of the image. That way we're able to test out that we can actually build our image and get it ready before we even try to push our image to anywhere else. So let's go ahead and create our job for Jenkins file one. So in our job name, Jenkins example GHCR, pipeline, click OK. We'll go down here to pipeline script from SCM. I'm going to go and copy my line here. We'll say get, there's our URL. We'll change our branch to main. And our script path is gonna be Jenkins file dash one. We'll go ahead and click on save and click on build now. So if we watch build number one run, what we'll see is the checkout, our build, it does the prune, which was very fast because there was nothing there. We do our build, so it's pulling in from Red Hat UBI 8 minimal, and it built it and tagged it the exact way that we wanted. So now that we know we can successfully build an image, let's get ready to push this image to GitHub Container Registry. Now, fortunately, there is some documentation that is included in the readme of how to set up and work with Container Registry. And in our case, what we have to do is we have to authenticate in order to be able to push to the registry. And in order to do that, we're going to have to set up a personal access token. And the personal access token is going to be using read packages, write packages, and potentially delete packages. But notice one thing here. There is a, by default, when you select write packages scope for your personal access token, the repo scope will also be selected. Now, I don't want my repo scope selected. I just want these read, write, and delete packages scopes period. That's all that I want. Well, fortunately, they give us the example to go directly into and creating a new token for ourselves. So I'm just going to use this, but I'm going to show you what would happen if you went directly to setting up a personal access token that shows the alignment with what this paragraph says. And I'm going to say settings, new tab, if I go down to developer settings, personal access tokens, and if I say generate new token, when I select write packages, you'll notice that repo got selected at the same time. And that's not what I want. I don't want repo selected at all because I have a public repository. That's what the example repository is. And I don't want anything to do with private repositories. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this suggested link here. I'm just going to copy this. And if you'll notice what happens, you'll see that this is settings tokens new. If I go ahead and paste this in, it's still settings tokens new, but now it's just scope write packages. So now if I hit enter, what we'll see is write packages has already been selected, but repo has not been. So I'm going to go ahead and give this a note. In fact, I'm going to name it the same as my repository for now. And I'm gonna leave the expiration default for 30 days. And I need to go ahead and select delete packages. So I have write, read, and delete. And now let's go ahead and copy this token. I'm gonna to put it off to the side so don't forget it. Okay, I've got that. Now from this token, I need to create a Jenkins username password credential. So let's go ahead and go back over to our controller dashboard, manage Jenkins. 
and manage credentials. And let's create a username password. Username password, my username is going to be my username within GitHub, which happens to be my address. I'm going to treat it as a secret. I'm going to grab my token. Make sure I don't have any extra spaces. Nope, it's all good there. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to name this token or this password, this credential, for what I'm going to be using in Jenkins file 2. In this case, it's called GitHub token. So I'm going to copy that, go back over here, and the ID is going to be GitHub token, and the description is going to be GitHub token. And we're going to click on OK. So now that I have my GitHub token ready, let's go back over and take a look at Jenkins file 2. So we need to set up a token. So we have that. We're doing our Docker system prune, our Docker build. And then what we need to be able to do is we need to be able to use that token. In this case, we're using our username and password, doing a Docker login against ghcr.io. And we're just bringing in the password from the standard in. That's the reason why we're echoing this out. So in Jenkins file 2, all that we're doing is we're making sure that we can use this credential and log in, and then finally always log out from our registry. So let's go ahead and go back over to our job. And let's modify this to use Jenkins file 2. So we'll go down here to Jenkins file 1, change it to Jenkins file 2. And let's go ahead and click on build now. What we'll see from the output for job run 2 is we'll see our Docker system prune again. That's fine. We do our build. That's good. We see our login succeeded. And we also see our Docker logout. So everything is working specifically for our login and logout from GHCR. Now, finally, let's go back over and take a look at our Jenkins file 3. Go back over here to Jenkins file 3, because this is what we're really trying to do. We're trying to build and push an image to GHCR. So in our case, what we're doing right now is we are going to be abstracting out our image name and our image version. Now, we could have done that earlier, but I was holding off until now, because now we're really needing to reuse this information, because we're going to be building the image, image name and image version. We're going to be logging in. We're going to be tagging the image, including ghcr.io. And again, you can refer to the GitHub documentation that is linked in the readme to understand what's going on here. And then finally, we do a push of the image up to ghcr.io. And then finally, 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 we log out. So here we go. Let's go back over to our job and change our number two to number three and click on Save. If we click on Build Now, what we're going to see here is we're cleaning up again. And the cleaning, you could leave that behind because typically you don't need to do that. I'm doing it just so we can see exactly what's going on. We do our tag, we do our push, and then we do our logout. So from this perspective, we are successful in building, tagging, and pushing our image to GitHub Container Registry. So let's go over to GitHub and see what we see over there. So we go back over to GitHub. What you're going to see is my package was published a minute ago, but it is marked private. And that's by default. Any packages pushed directly to GitHub Container Registry are marked as private by default. If you go into Package Settings, so we'll go to the package and click on Package Settings, we have the option to go ahead and change the package visibility from private to public. However, once you change the visibility from private to public, you can never change it back to private. So use this with great caution. Now let's go back over to our repository because it seems like we should be able to just go ahead and look at the repository and take a look at how this works here because it seems like I would have my package show up automatically within my repository. Now, we could do this manually. We could publish the first package, and we could go through and do a container and do all of this manually, but we don't want to do this manually. So how do we do this in an automated fashion? What we do is we make a modification to our Docker file to include a label. 
So to get ready for this, I'm going to go back over to my package and remove it. So I'll go to Packages, click into my package, and Package Settings, and I'm going to just delete this package. And yes, I'm going to get rid of this by copying and pasting. There we go. So now I no longer have any packages defined. Exactly what I wanted. Let's go into our repository again. So we'll go to Jenkins example G HCR. And this label is defined over in the GitHub documentation that we looked at earlier. So let's go ahead and edit this file just in place. And the label that I'm going to include is label, and this is where the magic happens, org open containers image source. And then we put in the URL for our repository. So let's go ahead and click on Commit Changes. And that committed right back up to our main branch. Yep, all that looks good. Now let's go back over to our job and let's run our job one more time. So we click on Build Now. We look at build number four. We see the build. We see the tag. We see the push and the logout. Now if we were to go back over to our repository and do a refresh, what we're going to see now is that there is one package associated to our repository and everything is ready to go from this point forward. As we've seen in this video, building, tagging, and pushing a container image to GitHub Container Registry isn't all that hard. What is interesting is if you want to be able to associate your packages to your repositories, you have to remember to add that label to your Docker file. If you have any questions or comments, you can reach out to us on Twitter at CloudBees. If this video was helpful to you, give us a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed to CloudBees TV yet, why not? Take a moment, click on that subscribe button, and then ring that bell, and you'll be notified anytime there's new content available on CloudBees TV. Thanks for watching, and we will see you in the next video.